Good evening, book lovers of the internet. Thank you all so much for joining me during my live stream this morning and welcome or welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I am going to be reviewing a book which I bought last month. This one is called Diary of an Oxygen Thief by Anonymous. And I just found out that there are three books in this series. I'm not sure if there are going to be any more. Overall, people don't seem to like it too much on Goodreads. It has a rating of 2.7, I think. I'll let you know in just a second. 2.72. Now, this one has about 150 pages, and I rated it 3 out of 5 stars. I am rather neutral about this one. I neither hated it nor did I love it. I don't think it's memorable at all, but there are some things about this book which will probably stick with me so I bought this one mainly because of its unique title and in certain cases also quite relatable title Diary of an Oxygen Thief it's a very very interesting title and also the author Anonymous the way the author decided to um, not share his identity since this is uh, meant to be a biography although it is labeled as fiction. Um, I found that to be quite interesting as well because he had the liberty of saying anything he wished to. And I will get to why I am assuming that the author is a male in just a couple of minutes. So I'm pretty sure that it's meant to be obvious, but I couldn't help but wonder which character truly is the oxygen thief. Um, the author seems to know what he's doing, um, but he is the type of person who manipulates others and then is manipulated himself. So um, he is on both the giving and the receiving end. So the thieving of oxygen can be quite ambiguous. This was a strange and fascinating read, uh, read as well as perplexing in the way that the saying of what goes around comes around goes. And I feel as though karma is really um, spoken about here without ever actually being brought up. So the writer tells us about how he liked to toy with the emotions of those who loved him, specifically several women who had a romantic interest in him. He tries to justify his actions by explaining in detail how much of an alcoholic he used to be before he tried to make an improvement to his life and decided to sober up. And then he also went on to having his own emotions toyed with, and not only his emotions, there was a woman who posed as his lover, whom he fell deeply in love with, and she tried to destroy his reputation by embarrassing him and getting some shots to add to her photography book. So this person works, uh, the author works at an advertisement company, and more about that later, basically. He never quite gave her the satisfaction, um, despite how she tried to embarrass him about um, for several reasons, and she had a whole crew set up in order to make him feel lesser than everybody else. And it was quite satisfying to see that he finally got a taste of his own medicine. So from what I could gather, the author had a very decent salary, a very well-paying job, about 300000 a year, he keeps bringing up. Yet there wasn't much going on to make his life a happy one, and he ultimately decided to put all his eggs in one basket where his love for this girl was concerned. But apparently, um, she never really had in mind to reciprocate these emotions, and she was only using him. So this one, um, in the sense of this book... It doesn't really have much of a structure, and the author first seems to tell us about himself and his preferences when it comes to love, sex, and his sadistic impulses, and then gives us several snippets hopping from one point in his life to another back to the original point, without much consideration with regard to confusing the reader. There are also very, very long chapters in this one, and it's split into three parts. Uh, the first two are much shorter than the third part, which is about 75 pages, half the book, that I didn't particularly enjoy because I really hate long chapters. So I imagine the author is a man because of the way he writes his female characters. And 
I mean, the same can be said of the person who wrote American Psycho, for instance. Um, you can just tell sometimes because characters written by females um, are usually different, both men and women. And yeah, I mean, having read so much, one could usually deduce um, a certain tone of sexism, um, egotistical impulses, that sort of thing, um, when characters are written by a man. Not to say that women don't have any flaws in their writing men as well, male characters. So let me know what you think of this, whether it's anything controversial, if you have any thoughts about it, about it in the comment section. So I wasn't blown away, and yet still enjoyed reading this, especially due to the stream of consciousness technique used, which is, of course, reminiscent of Virginia Woolf, um, an author who I haven't yet reviewed on my channel, but I probably should at some point. So this, as I was saying earlier, is meant to be a biography, although it's labeled as fiction, and... Many references are made by the author reflecting upon the possibility of his text being published. So we have a lot of self-reflexivity here, um, with the author mentioning that this book is a thing of real life. It basically adds another layer of reality to this so-called tale. So this did give me the Catcher in the Rye vibes, the one by J.D. Salinger, in the sense that the protagonist is confused and this furthers his frustration, and it's basically all a downward spiral from there. It just makes him more depressed um, as more time goes by, even though he tries to sober up, and the sobriety even adds more to his frustration and all the negative aspects of his life. So I wouldn't say that this is a memorable read in any way, but it's rather important to know that people who work in advertisement are not to be trusted, and I, for one, personally hate ads. So to answer the question of whether I would recommend this one or not, I probably wouldn't. Um, you're better off reading The Catcher in the Rye if you want this sort of atmosphere. And um, Lolita has also mentioned to compare um, in order to explain this book better, but I haven't read Lolita, so I didn't quite see... Um, how this ties in. Also, one thing I noted was how on the cover over here, there's the carrot instead of the nose um, meant to be representing a penis. And yeah, having a penis is a massive part of the story as well. So just a heads up over there. Um, anyway, that's all I have to say about The Oxygen Diary of an Oxygen Thief by Anonymous. I hope Anonymous is doing well, because it doesn't seem as though he is, even though there are another two books in the series. Let me know whether I should read them, if you have yourself, or whether you'd be interested in listening to my reviews uh, when it comes to these sorts of books. It's not a genre I am a massive fan of. Um, you know, biography in this sense. So when it's a person I don't really know, biography isn't uh, really the same fiction and biography, you know. There's a very interesting video idea there. But anyway, that's all I have to say about this book. Uh, make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, check out the rest of my content, because why shouldn't you? It's absolutely fantastic. And I'll see you in the next one, hopefully very, very soon. Bye, guys.